Good evening and welcome to our webinar on project-based learning and how Edmodo can be used in project-based learning to support the design process, the assessment process, and the management process of PBL in your classroom. My name is Dana Lauer and I am a national faculty member with the Buck Institute for Education. I am also currently a classroom teacher, um, a veteran classroom teacher of 14 years in social studies at the high school level. I currently teach AP government and law and I am also a Edmodo user in the classroom. And using Edmodo in the classroom over the past three years has really allowed me to enhance my project-based learning within the classroom. So before we really begin um, getting into project-based learning and how Edmodo is used to support it, I did want to briefly mention um, Edmodo as a tool and quickly how you can sign up for it. And all you simply need to do is to head over to edmodo.com and as you can see from our screenshot here, that it is a free tool for teachers. It is 100% educationally secure. So you don't need to worry about outside sources being able to get into your class that you set up online. You do receive a code, a secure online code that you give to your students for them to register. It's a quick and easy process, which we know is really important for us as teachers in the classroom. And as you can also see there in our screenshot, if you are a parent, you can have a parent sign up and get a parent access code so that they will have access to the materials that their son or daughter is using within your own classroom. I also wanted to very quickly mention uh, the Edmodo community that we have set up for the Buck Institute for Education. And we do have well over 2,000 members that have joined us in sharing best practices of project-based learning and project ideas. And we'll talk a little bit more about the community toward the end of the webinar. But if you aren't already a member, much of what I'm talking about uh, lends itself to the community aspects of our BIE community on Edmodo. This evening, we're going to take a look at three separate questions that we want to focus on in terms of how Edmodo actually supports us in the classroom through designing our project-based learning units, as well as assessing and managing those units. We're going to also look at how Edmodo is used to be a support system for us as the teacher, for our students, as well as parents. And finally, how Edmodo is planning on continuing to improve their system in order to better support project-based learning. They have some really exciting things planned in the coming weeks um, and towards the first of the year. And I know I'm excited to be able to implement those within my own classroom. So as we start this evening um, down my journey through using Edmodo in a particular project in my classroom, I did want to clarify very quickly the difference between projects and project-based learning. We know that many teachers do projects, and I know I've done projects in the past. However, there is a distinct difference between completing a project and actually doing a fully integrated project-based learning unit. And we're going to go over the elements of project-based learning. We will use those elements to discuss my project and then how each of those elements are supported through the use of Edmodo. And just to give you a little bit of background about this particular project, it is for my elective law class, which is comprised of mostly juniors and seniors with a handful of 10th graders. And this project is one that I just completed with my students before we went on Thanksgiving break. It was about a three week unit in length and I teach on a block schedule with 80 minute periods and I see my students daily. And this particular unit was our Intro to Criminal Law unit. And 
as I talk about each of these eight elements of project-based learning, you'll find out more of the details about this project and um, how we work together in the classroom and how my students collaborated to focus on how to reduce crime in our county. So the eight elements that we will focus on this evening are shown in our diagram. Um, if you notice, the two most important pieces here are the significant content and the 21st century skills. Those are equally important in project-based learning. And then on the outside of our diagram, we see the six elements that are used to enhance and support our significant content and 21st century skills. But remember, these eight elements are all necessary to have present in your project in order for it to be distinguished between a project and project-based learning. So as we start with significant content, in my particular unit here, the significant content, like any other project-based learning unit, was extremely important. So we need our students to come out of our courses having core knowledge about the subject area that we are teaching. And so the significant content is at the heart of any well-designed project-based learning unit. And for my particular course, significant content um, is not something that can easily be accessed in a textbook. Because of that fact, I have had to, over the last decade plus, do a lot of outside research in order to, to gain materials that my students can access, um, most of them online, to understand the concepts of Pennsylvania law. And I've used Edmodo to really support this particular project through multiple methods. And as this is an introduction to criminal law unit, we focused on crime and crime statistics and what happens um, from arrest to actual trial to being sentenced and life in prison and what happens in those intermediate stages. And so if you look to the left of the screen, you can see the tags that I have for my students. And about a third of the way down the list, you see the crime board. And now what I have done is I have uploaded certain resources for my students to access that they will be able to use in researching for this particular project on how to reduce crime in our county. And they are certainly not limited to these resources, but it is an excellent, excellent place for them to begin their research. And I also need to note that one of my courses that I teach is a co-taught course. So I am the regular education teacher and I have a special education teacher in the room with me and we share the teaching responsibilities. So some of the students that I have in that classroom are at a much lower level in terms of researching skills and reading um, capabilities. And so there's a lot of differentiation that needs to take place. And this is an excellent way for me to point those students to many of the resources that myself and my co-teacher have determined are necessary for them to complete this project. They, however, certainly are not limited to what we have listed here, and in fact, we encourage them to seek out other sources. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the library function. And what I am able to do through Edmodo is compile any of the documents that I want my students to access for the project. And so these are all contained in one area. Um, it's very easy for the students to get them via the computer at school or once they get home if they need to access any of the information. Um, it also cuts down certainly on the cost of printing any of the materials in hard copy. So it's a nice organizational feature 
for myself as well as for the students. Additionally, through the significant content, I am able to link resources for my students. So many of those tags that you saw, some of them ended up being um, related back to these links that are listed to um, begin their research. And these links then become very imperative again for differentiation as well as for all students. Um, the, the bottom link that I have listed there is for York County, Pennsylvania. And a couple of years ago in this research that was being conducted for this particular project, I noticed that one of my students was very intently researching York County, South Carolina, and had spent a good 20 minutes looking at the information for York County, South Carolina. So this allows me in creating these links to have my students have ready access to the important um, significant content and directing them to the particular areas that they need to be headed in terms of the research. Students can also upload their own links to Edmodo. So if they find additional resources, they may upload them. They may also tag them for other students to use as well. I'd also like to point out to you here, as you can see, um, there are two separate classes that I currently teach. And so through Edmodo, I am allowed to and able to upload content for not only one class, but to send it to both classes. And we know as teachers that's a, a wonderful time-saving feature so that it only takes a click of a button rather than having to upload for multiple classes. And now we move on to the 21st century skills element. Significant content, remember, in 21st century skills are equally important because if our students can't uh, communicate and collaborate and think critically about the content, then we've really done a disservice to them. Um, we don't want them to merely memorize our content. So with these 21st century skills, in this particular project, I'm focusing on all three of them, and Edmodo supports all three of those 21st century skills. As we see in this next screenshot that I have here, um, there is critical thinking going on, um, obviously communication, as well as collaboration. Again, as you see period two and period four, the first post is actually from um, my period two class, and the second post is from my period four class. So two different classes meeting at two different times with two very different groups of students are now able to communicate with one another and collaborate with one another on their ideas via Edmodo because these posts can be sent to both groups and can be shared with both groups. And as you can see from the content that's in them, they were thinking critically about articles that they were researching, uh, which really leads us into our next element, the need to know. All too often as teachers, we find our students asking us, why do we need to know this? Is it on a test? Is it gonna help me in the future? Why do I need to know it? Why are we doing it? And what we want to do in the context of designing our project is create the need to know for them. We want to have that engagement factor for our students so that our students are motivated to understand the concepts so that they want to gain the significant content knowledge and they want to answer what our driving question is going to be and produce a well thought out product and they do that through the need to know. So if any of you gentlemen out here are listening have ever bought a diamond ring for your significant other, I would venture to guess that you didn't need to know anything about cut color and clarity until it came time to actually purchase that ring. And then all of a sudden you had a need to know. So within the context of this project, Edmodo was really significant in allowing me to create what we call an entry event so that my students had a need to know for wanting to reduce crime in our county. And they, in small groups, took a look at articles that I had pulled on crime statistics and research regarding um, ways in which 
crime rates rise and ways in which crime rates can be reduced. And this initiated our discussion on Edmodo. Now, certainly I could have done this in the context of simply uh, a verbal discussion within the class, and I've actually done that in the past. However, in order to get input from everyone in the class and to do it online, to have it recorded, to be able to track what students are saying, and to be able to give students enough of wait time to think about and formulate their answers, Edmodo becomes the perfect place for that discussion starter piece. So we saw a very similar post in the previous element slide with our 21st century skills with the communication, collaboration, and critical thinking, but we see it again here um, with a different topic, with a different group of students formulating their need to know based on the entry event as we create that context for the engagement in the project. The project itself then needs to have what we call a driving question. And that driving question is something that is open-ended. It's very intriguing for the students, and it's something that we want to really capture what our students are being challenged with and any kind of engaging issues that they are investigating. And obviously, in my case, we had a very open-ended, engaging piece for them. But before we move on to the actual driving question, I want to do a, a very quick overview of the relationship between driving questions and essential questions. And I know many of you have probably used essential questions in your curriculum. I know here in Pennsylvania, um, we all use essential questions. My courses have essential questions. They are written into my curriculum. There are things that I have to use, and they really help me to formulate my curriculum and how I'm going to teach. However, a couple of years ago, we had a new teacher come on board that was going to be teaching the law course with me. And she looked at the essential questions, essential questions that I thought were really great, uh, and said to me, well, Dana, how are the students supposed to answer these essential questions if I can't answer the essential questions? And at that point, I realized I needed to do some of my own reflection and revise what I was um, using in terms of the classroom with those questions. And even though I still refer to my essential questions and they still help to guide my instruction, the focus of the project for my students becomes that driving question. So in this particular project, we focused on the driving question, the very open-ended and intriguing question, how can we reduce crime in York County? So it was something that very much hits home for my students. And as you can see in this Edmodo post, the students are responding to how they can reduce crime in York County. So as our project had progressed, each of my individual groups were assigned a particular area to research. Those areas of research included things like crime statistics, life in prison, probation, um, victims' rights advocates. So there were a variety of topics that they looked at. And through their research, then the students had to do small group presentations just to the class. And those small group presentations had to conclude with what the group felt should be done based on their topic, based on their research, to reduce crime in York County. And at the conclusion of all of the small group presentations, then we had that online discussion about how each individual felt we could reduce crime in York County. And so here, based on the screenshot, you can see three different opinions. Again, having that ability to engage all of the students in their responses and letting them have that wait time to think about and formulate their responses rather than only having a few students engage in the conversation, which quite often is the case when you hold a whole class discussion. As we move on to the next element of in-depth inquiry, I think you've probably already seen a little bit of that in-depth inquiry that was happening, but 
in this particular element, students are really involved in not only looking at the driving question, but digging into that driving question where they are asking questions. They are conducting research. They are finding additional resources, um, including the ones that I had originally given them. They are creating their solutions. They are coming up with our final products. And so this in-depth inquiry becomes really important in my particular project because now the students are beginning to question each other in terms of how are these solutions going to work? What are the pros? What are the cons? Um, based on all the research that they have done. And you will see in this screenshot where the students were then posting their own questions. Um, you can notice at the top there that Carol was able to send it to me as well as to send it to the entire class. So now it's not just simply a case of me as the teacher posting questions to the students, but the students are creating their own questions and seeking out answers to those questions. Um, you know, looking at the pros and cons here, looking at alternatives, um, looking at benefits to the community, looking at negatives um, for implementing any and all of these solutions. And our next element we move into is voice and choice. We all know as adults there are certain things that we would prefer to do. Um, over other things and we know as learners that in the classroom there were certain things that probably turned us off individually. I, I know as a very good student I was petrified if I had to create anything that remotely was related to drawing or anything of artistic value because I felt very uncomfortable doing any of that type of thing as a student. However, if I was asked to write something that's what I wanted to do. So having that voice and choice becomes an imperative piece of project-based learning so that students remain engaged and that students want to complete the project. So voice and choice can come in a variety of means within any project and the level of voice and choice is certainly up to you as you design your projects. However, um, Edmodo gives you some vehicles for using voice and choice and in my particular project I used Edmodo to support, support voice and choice through the polling feature. In this case our students were able to narrow down some of the topics um, that they were leaning toward for our solutions for how to reduce crime in our county and we took the top three and my students had to vote on that and they did it through the polling feature and this is an instantaneous um, piece so I can see the results and it works a little bit better for me uh, than poll everywhere um, because with poll everywhere my students have to pull out their cell phones and sometimes cell reception isn't always the best in my classroom and it gets frustrating and this is an instantaneous piece it takes moments for me to type in the poll and it takes moments for the students to respond to the poll and you can see that um, it's a little bit deceiving here that I only had 18 students that responded. Um, I took the screenshot immediately after they voted and I had several students. I had five students that were missing that day but then the beauty of this um, piece is that at home my students know to check Edmodo so they were able to vote that evening for what they decided was the best overall plan for reducing crime in our county. And if for some reason they weren't able to get online, they can certainly check it the very next day as soon as they get into class. But showing that voice and choice because ultimately this project became not just a small group project, but it evolved into an entire class project. So the entire class had to then work cooperatively. They had to communicate with one another um, as they had been thinking critically about how to reduce crime in our county to come up with one overarching plan for their final presentation. And as they were coming up with that overarching plan, they had to do a lot of revision and reflection. 
what was going to work, what wasn't going to work, how were they going to be able to justify each piece of their plan. And revision and reflection is such an important element of project-based learning, and it's one of those elements that teachers frequently leave out um, based on time constraints, and um, not even sometimes time constraints, but just not thinking about the value of revision and reflection. But in my case, certainly as my students are working toward a final presentation and they were getting ready to do this final presentation for a panel of experts, we had to do a lot of revision and reflection and make changes um, and ensuring that we could justify all of those changes. And Edmodo provided a wonderful vehicle for doing that revision and reflection because we know what happens in the classroom um, if you ask a student to do some revising based on the paper version you get comments like this is great love it um, or if it's in an open forum yeah that looks good so in the Edmodo sense now we have the ability to again have our students stop pause and really think about it in terms of how can I give constructive feedback because we want our reflections to be part of our critical thinking and we want it to be meaningful so that the end product will be as professional as possible and based on our screenshot here you can see how important it was from the responses that were captured on what was done very well, but what was irrelevant in terms of the research and the presentation. Now our final element is a public audience. And leaving out that public audience piece uh, is, is certainly something that you don't want to do because this really takes the project to the next level rather than just me the teacher looking at it or just the peers within the classroom looking at the final product now we extend that audience beyond the classroom walls and certainly a public audience can take a variety of you know measures it, it could be writing a letter to someone in the community and actually sending that letter but in my case we brought in a formal panel of experts now this is the element that I did not complete on Edmodo, but this element would not have been as possible without Edmodo. Now certainly I can do the project without the use of Edmodo. Um, it would have taken me much longer to complete the project rather than the, the three weeks that it took. And uh, I'm not so sure and I'm not so convinced that the first couple of times that I did this project without Edmodo that the feedback and the revision and the reflection and some of the critical thinking from all of the students was necessarily there. Um, you know, the Edmodo piece really allows me to track it much better. And from these pictures, you can see that um, I have a variety of students up in front of the class. Remember, this was one cohesive presentation Every student in my class participated. They came up in waves. They each had their own specialty um, topics that they were discussing. And you can see their charts and their graphs and their diagrams that they were explaining and justifying to the panel of experts that you can see in the last piece where some more reflection was taking place as the panel responded to their presentation. And our panel consisted of uh, several police officers, we had a legislator, we had the head of the prison board that came to join us, um, and we had the district attorney from our county that came as well. And it was such a wonderful experience for the students, and we had such positive feedback from the panel, and it made the students very, very proud of the work that they did and all of the efforts that they put in through the work on Edmodo paid off for them in the long run. As we move into the next phase of this, you've seen how Edmodo supports the design process. Now let's look at the assessment piece and how Edmodo can really allow you to still use some traditional teaching tools even though it is a 21st century online learning platform. And the first feature that I want to talk about 
for assessment is the quiz feature. Certainly a much more traditional type of assessment, um, a summative type of assessment. And this particular view in the screenshot that you are seeing is from the student's perspective. So this is from a student account. I captured a screenshot from a student account. And it was just simply a five question quiz. And my students uh, saw, saw the questions, responded with the answers, and you can see the number of questions. Um, and they can go back to and re-answer if they need to. You can see you have a timing feature if you would like to use it. It gives you an hour. It certainly didn't take an hour for my students to answer five questions. But the really nice piece of this is once they have answered their questions, they then submit their questions and they turn in their quiz. So I can track how many people have turned it in. I can see which students have turned it in, which students are still working on it. And um, if I have a student that is absent, they know that they can go directly onto Edmodo. They can take the quiz and they can turn it in. Additionally, that really great time-saving feature where I can give the quiz to both periods at once. It saves me the trouble of having to type the quiz in a Word document, print it out, make copies, hand them out, grade them by hand, hand them back. Now I have them all turned in. I haven't used any paper. And as I grade them, then they can be returned to the students via Edmodo. There's also the assignment feature in Edmodo that's very nice, very similar to the quiz feature with the, the turning it in. And you can see when projects have been turned in and by whom, or in terms of the, the assignment rather. I can upload a document. The students can complete whatever it is. They simply then hand it in. It's an excellent feature for tracking those students that don't always do assignments, that don't always do work. And rather than having to go back into your traditional gradebook and find the blank spaces or the zeros, now it automatically is coming up and I can track those pieces. It's also nice for the parents because once the parents get the online code, they can track and see what their students have completed and what they have turned in. Which leads us into our next feature with the calendar. And for those students who aren't very organized, this is a, a very nice way for you to share with every student rather than having to write down in a planner um, and remember to take that planner home. Now it's in the calendar, it's online, the student has access, the parent has access. It helps me to keep me in line in terms of our time frame and what we need to work on because certainly in a project like this where I have a professional panel that is coming in, it's not a case of, oh, I'm sorry, the morning of making phone calls to my panel to say, do you think you could come in tomorrow instead? My students aren't quite ready. So it keeps me on track. And in my absence, which tends to be quite frequent as I do some traveling um, also with my work that I do across the country with the Buck Institute, it's a way for me to keep in line or to have my substitutes understand what needs to be completed. Our community that we've established on Edmodo for BIE um, is something that is very helpful as well. And we have a lot of resources within our community that you can download and then simply upload to your own classes. Um, of course, we have the feature on our community where we have well over 2,000 members that are sharing best practices and asking for help on ideas for new projects as well as having national faculty members within BIE um, interact with our community members. So that's a wonderful feature. But not only that, if you take a look up here at the top where it says collection, 
you can click on that collection button and now we can move into some of the features that we have in our collection. The collection piece functions very much like the library function that you as a teacher would have available within your own classes. Now in the community you have access to multiple pieces of information that can enhance your own process is you design projects and you implement projects. And in this particular shot, we have examples of videos that we have uploaded online to give you some ideas of projects to do. They range in content areas as well as elementary, middle school, and high school examples. So those are great that they're relatively short videos but nice project overviews for something that you can implement or tweak to then implement within your own classes. We also have within our collection um, uh, some rubrics that you might want to use to judge presentations or to assess your students in their critical thinking or to assess your students on their collaboration. And these are downloadable from the BIE community and you are certainly free to use those and to share them, of course, with your students. So you might want to upload them in your library for your students to access so that they know how specifically they will be assessed. We also have many of our student handouts that are available for downloading as well. Um, these can help you with the student contracts and give you some examples of how to have your students complete those student contracts as they are working collaboratively and the grouping norms that they will come up with. And these are things, again, that you can put in your own library that students have access to. They can complete a management log and keep track of what they are doing within their group work as they are staying on track so that they are staying within the confines of what has been listed on the calendar that you've established for them. And then finally, I'd like to talk about the new feature piece and portion of what we are going to be seeing in the coming weeks and months within Edmodo. And Edmodo has been really wonderful about taking feedback from teachers and incorporating that feedback into improving their products. And one of the best features that I am so excited about is the gradebook feature. As you can see from my screenshot, I do not currently use the gradebook feature in Edmodo. Um, I simply don't do it because it's like double duty work for me. I have an online gradebook that I use and um, Edmodo's is very similar to that and so I'm not going to do grades in both Edmodo and my online gradebook that is provided by my district. However, project-based learning is going to be supported by the newly released and upcoming gradebook feature that Edmodo is working on. There will be the ability to take the critical thinking piece and to take the collaboration piece and to um, disaggregate all of that information within the context of the gradebook so that when students look at it, so that when you analyze a student's assessment, so that when parents take a look at what their child has been doing and how well they've been performing, they can see, are they lacking in their communication skills? Are they lacking in critical thinking? Do they need to work on their collaboration? So this is a wonderful feature that I know many of us in the project-based learning world are extremely excited about with the release from Edmodo. And now we'd like to take the opportunity to answer any questions that you may have regarding project-based learning and how Edmodo can be used to support project-based learning. 
All right, and I see we have a question um, asking if Edmodo is supported in any other languages, specifically Spanish. And I know that we've had some international uh, teachers that are with us this evening from Spain um, and from Japan. Uh, and I have been told that yes, Edmodo is available in multiple languages, including Spanish, Greek, German. Um, not that I've ever used Edmodo in those languages. I've not had a need to, but Edmodo is supported in those languages. And I see we have another question regarding Edmodo apps. And yes, Edmodo is a, a free app that can be downloaded. Um, you can download it to your iPhone, to your Droid, um, to your iPad. They are um, compatible with smartphones. And so if you have a student that does not have internet access at home but has a smartphone, they can get on to Edmodo. They can do that very easily. If they're going away on vacation, they have access to Edmodo in that way. Um, and it is a free downloadable app. And it is um, very useful for me when I'm sitting in an airport and I need to check on my students and what they are doing. And my students have found it very useful as well. And we have one more question regarding um, Edmodo and whether or not it's going to remain free or if it, it in the future is going to be bought out. Well, while I can't speak with any authority for sure on um, those two particular topics, I can tell you that I have been told by the Edmodo staff that yes, Edmodo will remain free for all teachers and that there are certainly absolutely no plans for Edmodo to be bought out by anyone. Um, they want it to remain free. Like I said before, I've been using this for the last three years. Um, I plan on continuing to use it, both in my classroom and through professional development workshops that I do as well. And we do have one more question. Yes, okay, Edmodo and for uses in higher education, absolutely. Um, I would venture to guess that using Edmodo in a college classroom where you have college students that would prefer to sit and do nothing but take notes um, would become very engaged with this Facebook-like feel of the application and would begin to participate in online discussions and you simply would have to pull it up on your whiteboard and you can see the responses coming in real time and garner a lot of engagement from your students um, at that collegiate level. And I think you would be surprised at how many students around the country are being exposed to Edmodo and 21st century type tools, Web 2.0 tools. And once they get to college, they still crave that type of interaction. So I would highly recommend it for the collegiate level. And before we um, sign off this evening, I would. Uh, I'd like to mention a brand new feature that we at BIE just launched today. So it's only been up and running for a couple of hours. And it is our online project planner. Now within the BIE community on Edmodo, you can certainly download um, in hard copy our project planner. Um, but now we have the availability online at our BIE.org site to complete the project planner online, save it online, have access to it online, and access to other project plans as well. So all you need to do is sign up for it and play around with it, see how you like it, give us some feedback, and um, we certainly hope that you'll be sharing those projects with us on, online, on our Edmodo community. Um, tweet us, let us know what you think. And remember, if you haven't already joined, feel free to, to hop online to our BIE community. And um, all you need to do to find us is once you have your Edmodo account, 
is click on the bottom left hand corner where it says search for communities and search for BIE and join us and the other 2300 uh, teachers from across the country and the world that are communicating, collaborating, and sharing best practices in project-based learning. Thank you all for a wonderful evening and we hope to see you again soon at our next webinar for math and project-based learning. Thanks everyone.